So good news, the health department finally, finally sent me an email back yesterday, maybe about 24 hours ago, and they gave me some good news. I guess sometimes any news is better than no news. So we got some news. I don't know if it's good. I'm gonna have to do some changes. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what they are right now. But for now, we have the loaner. And this Tesla is pretty cool, man. You know, you know how much I rant about Teslas. But this one is super fast. It has a Ludacris. And then the Ludacris Mo Plus, where if you put it, max battery, this thing got some get up, man. Got some get up. But with that, let's go in depth and see what's exactly the guidelines for DuPage County Health Department to get a food truck running. What is it that they are requesting of me and how we're gonna present it to them through the next step. So with that, let's go. Okay, so here, let's start off. So September 23rd is kind of when I first started talking with DuPage County Health Department and they send you like everything obviously that's needed. They're actually pretty thorough in what they send you and it's pretty clear except for a couple of things and I'll show you guys here right now. So when uh, you wanna apply to be a mobile food vendor, let's say you wanna do like a hot dog cart, a food truck, um, selling cupcakes, selling you know whatever you want on the streets. In DuPage County, this is how you do it. So they ask for a menu, which for me it was my breakfast burritos. Uh, they ask for a completed commissary agreement which that means I'm gonna put out probably a different video in the future and tell you guys exactly what a commissary means because it was pretty interesting what it what it was and uh, how we got connected there. A plan review application that just means what your business name is, your address, what kind of vehicle you're gonna have, all that wonderful jazz that goes with it, uh, and provide approval from a local fire department on the ventilation hood. That's actually one of the bullet points that I'm gonna show you guys because they emailed me yesterday and they gave me like an update. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what they told me word for word. Your truck's order window will need to be screened. I do have that because I bought it with a screen installed. Provide copies of food service sanitation manager certification. That's a mouthful. Um, that one actually is an exam that you have to take over to um, I took it at the DuPage County Airport. It's like a proctored exam. That means like you're locked in a room under lock and key. They make you put your phone away and all that fun stuff. And then you submit a, you put all that together. You do like a little drawing of exactly how your truck or your trailer or your car is going to look like. Everything that's going to go in it to the specs. And then you do a plan review, which is 212 bucks. And when they approve that, then you have to pay $425 to be able to have a annual food permit to sell food. So if we go down here, they sent me, this is the requirements, the guidelines they give you. So on here, let's go by it. And then I'm gonna show you guys the email. So you need a uh, DuPage County permit sticker, which obviously we're working to get. All food must be obtained from an approved source. That just means that you just can't grow chickens outside your backyard. You actually have to buy them from like, let's say Costco or Gordon's Food Service or any type of food vendor that's out there. You know, you can even go to Walmart uh, if you run out of eggs or turkey bacon or something, emergencies. Uh, you have to have the common name on the food, uh, any allergies that must come with it. So if you're selling like peanuts, milk or eggs, you might say, hey, you know what? Um, you might have allergies to the items here. Let me see a probe thermometer. Oh my gosh. A probe thermometer must be required on uh, on the truck. And then it gives you the temperatures of what you need, 135 for the hot ones. Maintain that temperature always. And then 41 degrees or below to maintain the cold foods. Uh, obviously hot, all hot foods, not so that the end of the day must be discarded. That should be common sense, but sometimes we need reminders. They, they put that there for a reason. <laughs> so somebody must have messed up. So uh, direct hand contact with foods is prohibited. Uh, you can wear the gloves, which we'll have on our truck, or the tongs, deli paper, things like that. So here's an issue that I have. If you see right here, hand sink must be supplied with hot and cold water. I have that. Soap and paper towels for vendors with open food. I have that. The issue and the reason I sent them an, uh, um, a comment that you guys are going to see right now is they want a specific kind of hand sink. And what I'm telling them is if you guys wanted that hand sink, you guys should clearly put it on here. Uh, but at the end of the day, if that's what they want, I will give them that. But I at least have to raise the, the flag to be, hey, you guys don't say it. Is there a way to work around it? So that way I don't have to buy a new sink and all that fun stuff because eh, that's another 100 bucks that has to be spent there. Let me see what else we have here that's important to us. 
Let me see. Food preparation must be enclosed. Overhead protection provided. Disposable forks and knives must be wrapped. Um, let me see. The food cart, truck, or trailer must be returned to an approved facility for cleaning. That we that means like all the water that you put in your tanks, you got to dump it out and put new water in there on a daily basis. The company name must be displayed on the side of the truck. And then obviously, if you're changing operations, DuPage County, you must uh, update them. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. If you're moving anywhere else, like if you were to quit a job, you got to give them some type of notice. Same thing over here. So let's move on here. It says the truck or trailer must meet uh, all commercial standards, which uh, is NSF, uh, Nat National Safety Federation, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm kind of guessing. But I would believe that's what NSF stands for. All shelves and counters must be stainless steel. And this is my but that I should have read this a little bit more clearer because I bought my two tables and they have galvanized shelves underneath. It's still steel. It says galvanized steel, but I guess they want everything stainless steel. And they're a little bit more pricey. Maybe that's why I went with the galvanized steel in the beginning. We're talking about 150 bucks more each. Uh, but now I got to bite the bullet and actually buy them. So that's another 600 bucks that's going to come out of pocket. All millwork cabinetry must be on six inch legs. Again, the order window must be screened. That must be important because they added it twice. I always say if somebody adds something a couple of times, it must be important. We don't have an ice maker. Let me see. So here's where the water tanks go. It must be 15% larger than the clear water tank. Clear water tank is like fresh water where you're going to use to wash your dishes and your hands and things like that. A three compartment sink with dual integral drain boards. Drain boards is what you have on the side of the sink. Uh, so the you know you can put the dishes up there and they drain back into the sink. And that way uh, you have a nice flow of water and it's not just stuck on top. And that's, that was a little bit harder to find, but we were able to find it a little bit pricier. But in the truck, it's uh, real estate is a commodity. So every inch counts there. A power source must be installed. Uh, that's the generator that we have in the front. Uh, let's see if cooking on the truck, you must be approved by the local fire department. I talked to them today and we are on board. So we're gonna have all that squared away. The floors, walls, and ceilings must be a durable and cleanable material. I use stainless steel. I'll never do that again, but they do have a material called FRP. So if you guys go to the bathroom and you guys will look at the wall, you guys will see like white plastic around it. Or if you guys go to like a restaurant, you guys will see instead of just regular drywall, it has like a real, uh, like a plasticky, uh, like a, pla like a plasticky um, material that you can wipe really easy. So that's that. And then you have a trash water receptacle, waste receptacle, it must be on the truck or trailer. Obviously that's a trash can. And that's pretty much it on there. Now let's go back <clears throat> to the email that she sent me. So it's right here. So boom, it starts right here. Hi Frank, I'm beginning the review on your project. This was four days ago. It should take me a day or so to complete. Thank you, thank you. So then they sent me this. I would say 24 hours ago. It says, I have reviewed the plans for the mobile truck and I need a few items to be addressed. Do you have a report showing that the hood has been inspected and approved? The order window must be screened. Verify that it is screened. It is. The hand sink bowl is too small. Provide a hand sink having a bowl of 14 inches left to right. That to me is like where I have my issue because mine is nine inches left to right. And they should have told me this. Like if it would have told me like I need this type of clearance, I would have bought it from the get go. And that's kind of the issue that I'm having. Hopefully I can get away with it. If not, like I said, I'm going to make it happen. It doesn't matter. It is what it is. Uh, and then the work tables have galvanized under shelves. That's what I was telling you guys about everything stainless steel replaced with tables having stainless steel under shelves, which is going to cost me about 600 bucks because I have to order three new ones. The two pan electric steam table doesn't appear to be NSF approved. That is actually 100% correct. I verified that and it's not NSF approved. Um, so I had to return that one and I ordered a different one and that'll come in in the next week or so. And that will be NSF approved. So I have to update the plan there, make sure that that is taken care of. I cannot verify the glass door fridge is NSF approved. That was one of those fridges. You know, if you guys go to Walgreens, uh, you see like the Coke fridge or the Pepsi fridge and uh, that's kind of like the little small short ones that's what i had and this was my answer 
I will contact fire department today to get that report. The order window is screened. I can provide a picture. And then that's back to the hand stick I was telling you guys. And then these are the two tables I'm going to have to use, which is stainless steel, stainless steel. And let's eliminate the fridge. So we're going to take it out. Boom. It's out the door. And instead of the fridge, I'm going to add this last piece right here, which is this Volrath Cayenne Single Panini Sandwich Press. But it's not actually a sandwich press. If you guys go to Chipotle, you know how they have that press where they heat up the tortillas? That's actually what this is. It's a square shape, but it's big enough for a flour tortilla, which is 10 and a half inches. So this is 13 inches by 12 inches. So it's perfect for heating up the tortillas. And then now we're waiting to see what they, uh, what they sent me attached as a hood report. So with that, that's the update guys. Like we're just rocking and rolling, making sure we get this taken care of. Hopefully I can order everything by Monday. Uh, and then uh, I don't know what the turnaround time is from there to, for them to give me another email. But for now, 